Let's say you play Fox in Smash Melee and you wanted to spam this move as fast as possible for a minute straight. How many times could you do it? According to the frame data, the game allows Fox to repeat this move every 28th frame, and since the game runs at 60 frames per second, you'd be able to do the move 133 times. But can you actually time the input exactly on the 28th frame every time for an entire minute? You can try pausing this video with spacebar right now to see if you can nail the timing even once. If you're a frame too early, Fox does nothing, but if you're a frame too late, then you're not spamming the move as fast as possible. You're not perfectly spamming. Timing this is hard, but humans are capable of timing inputs very accurately. This is Dolce playing the rhythm game Beat Mania. When it says great and the letters are flashing, it means he's hitting the notes within a two-frame window, also known as a just great. But yeah, most of us are not multi-champion rhythm game players, so what can we do instead? The tempting answer is to just mash. One of the fastest mashers ever is Ludwig Ogren, who set a record for Mario Party 4's domination game with 201 presses in 10 seconds, or about 20 times per second. But mashing like this would not only be impractical, you would still miss the 28th frame about two-thirds of the time. So if you can't time it and you can't mash, what can you do? You can actually do both at once. Because fighting games are not rhythm games, you can double your chances of timing an input by quickly pressing the button twice in succession. For example, arcade controller players have a two-finger double tapping technique that lets you do this with minimal effort. Some players will double tap everything to be safe, especially in older titles that occasionally drop inputs during the game. In the Street Fighter 2 series, doing an invincible reversal uppercut meant you had to time a punch button within one frame of accuracy. Of course, double tapping will help with this, but you can also piano the three punch buttons to get three quick button presses with relative ease. If three chances are not enough, the game also counts releasing the button as an input for special moves, which is called negative edge. What that means is you can quickly press three buttons and release those three in quick succession, giving you six punch button inputs in a short time. This greatly increases the chances of you nailing that exact frame without having to go like this. This is a kind of calculated mashing. You're mashing the right buttons at the right time. But while we can do all sorts of crazy things to get the perfect timing, what can the games do for us? They can do what game vendors do, pre-orders. They allow you to order the game in advance and get it automatically the moment it's released. No need to mash refresh on the website until the game comes out. This is how inputs work in games like Smash Ultimate. After Fox does a down tilt attack in this game, you can time the next attack input up to 9 frames early and have the move come out automatically at the earliest possible moment. 9 frames is your window to pre-order, also known as the input buffer. By pre-ordering your attack each time like this, you can spam the attack perfectly without timing it perfectly. You can still double tap or piano to increase your odds further, but with much more leniency, mashing becomes much more viable, if still not practical. This is how you make combo timings or any successive commands more lenient. But input buffers can affect your defense as well. For example, in Street Fighter 4, there is no input buffer for normal attacks when you're blocking. Relenta's EX roll when blocked leaves him vulnerable for 5 frames. Ryu's sweep comes out in exactly 5 frames, so to punish, you have to time the kick button perfectly. One frame too early, the sweep won't come out, and one frame too late, Relenta will recover and block. This is a just frame punish, and double tapping or plinking techniques will help a lot. But when you block a move in Tekken 7, there is a generous buffer when inputting simple attacks. Kazuya's down forward to Gut Punch leaves him vulnerable for 12 frames if it's blocked, and Xiaoyu's shoulder attack comes out in exactly 12 frames, mathematically a just frame punish. But while I'm in blocking animation as Xiaoyu, I can pre-order her shoulder attack many frames in advance so it comes out as soon as her blocking animation finishes. This guarantees it will hit Kazuya before he can recover. Much easier to time. But what's not easy to time in Tekken is just frame punishes with motion inputs because there is no buffer to help you. Just frame punishes with electrics are notoriously hard to time. But in Street Fighter 4, special attacks with motion inputs have a very generous buffer, meaning you can pre-order dragon punches while blocking, getting hit, or getting up. This makes mashing the dragon punch input very effective, and it's why Gandhi was able to land so many in this legendary match. So yeah, mashing works. 
sometimes. This was Gerald from Cory Gaming. Thanks for watching. This video is sponsored by Ridge Wallet, and this is it right here. It's light, it doesn't fold, and it's low profile, so it won't bulge in your pocket like my old wallet did. It's smaller, but it holds up to 12 cards with room for cash, so it can still hold all my stuff. They're made of metal, so you can basically use it for the rest of your life, which is why they give you a lifetime warranty, and they'll even give you a full refund within 45 days if you don't like it. If you want one, you can get 10% off and free worldwide shipping and returns if you go to rich.com slash and use the code Gaming. Thanks for watching and see you next video or stream.